today on the Trend Out Loud podcast. Drake did what Drake does. And he's like, I just want to remind you guys that I'm that dude. What up? It's your boy Trend Out Loud and I'm back with another episode. All right. It's Friday morning. I am actually doing all right, considering that I was out very, very late last night partying. As I told you guys yesterday, Grand Prix weekend in Montreal is crazy. I wasn't even sure that I was going to do a show today, but but I did put a little small show together because I could not keep you guys hanging. But FYI, I will not be doing a show on Monday. I already told people at CFQR that I am taking off Monday because... It's about to get crazy this weekend, all right? Okay, so like I said, I got a small show for you. I got two lead stories. I got one, oh, sorry, the one lead, sorry, the two lead stories. See, I'm rushing here. Calm down, Trent. All right, Um, I got two lead stories. Drake deletes all his Kendrick Lamar disses from his IG page. I have to talk about this. This is one of the reasons why I literally did this podcast, because I got to talk to you guys about that. Then in our second lead story, Sean Kingston is released from jail. We've talked about that a couple of times, so I just wanted to follow up on that with you guys. Then I got just one quick story. Ice Spice clears up um, her album title, which she doesn't actually really clear it up, but we'll talk about it. No speed news today. I got one question of the day, and then we're going to close out, as we always do, with a little bit of sports news. Y'all know what time it is. Turn your TVs, your radios, or your devices up. I'm about to start this show. Let's go. Drake removes all his Kendrick Lamar disses from his Instagram. All right, so there is actually no actually like written story about this because nobody knows why he has done it. But if you look at Drake's Instagram, it's all gone. And he also made a post a few hours after he deleted it or that people notice he deleted it. And he said, the only yes man around me is my Rolex dealer, which some people say is kind of like a shot to the people that are like, haha, you lost and et cetera, et cetera. But what I think it is, like I said, this is why I wanted to jump on here. And what I think it is, is I think Drake is going to use this as a little bit of a reset. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure if he in his head thinks that he was defeated or if he's going to actually acknowledge of accepting defeat. I'm not a hundred percent sure about that yet. However, what I do think is that Drake is going to use this time as a little bit of a reset. Now we've seen him do BBL Drizzy with sexy red, like academics told us though, that album or that project was an ep was already in the works so i think drake was kind of like hey i don't want to leave you hanging you're my girl i actually don't want to do anything right now but i'll give you this and he's like hey let me flip this that's drake being funny the second thing that we got from him was hey delilah which was to me hilarious i already spoke about that two or three podcasts ago where uh, everybody in the u.s thought it was a real song it was really just uh, a a parody but um i think drake is going to use this time to just get a little bit more serious. And what I mean by serious is he's always going to have his comedic funny things where he makes fun of himself, like Hey Delilah or BBL Drizzy. But I think we're going to see like the next trap chapter of Drake, kind of like how Jay-Z did with uh, the Black Album, where it was like that character of that the Jay-Z character kind of died off. And then it was like, okay, I'm coming back out of retirement as Sean Carter. You saw him be a little bit more business-like. You seen him not really talk about that much street stuff, except for on the um, American Gangster, which was a soundtrack. So he used that to kind of like talk about his, you know, his past street life or whatever. But, you know, Jay-Z is still Jay-Z. If you look at all of his, his albums, you still see, a Jay-Z, but you, you see a growth, you know, and Charlemagne talks about the, uh, his album 444 being one of the most important hip hop albums in, I don't know if he said in our generation or of all times he said, but later on we'll, we'll appreciate that. Getting back to Drake, I think like that, I think that's why he deleted it. I think this will be like a cleansing for him. And will he still have, you know, girls? Will he still have 100%? You know, Kendrick Lamar really highlighted that, you know, Drake was always liking, you know, these Instagram models and he's not going after women that have substance, etc. I don't think we're going to see a jar rule where it's going to be a complete 
turnaround where we're not even going to recognize who Drake is. He's still going to be him. But I think we're going to see more than subtle, more than subtle changes on the next album. And I think that's what he's setting up for. And I think that's why he, um, he deleted the Kendrick Lamar diss tracks. I think it was a cleansing. Okay, I did Sexy Red. BBL Drizzy, ha ha ha. Okay, I did Hey Delilah. I did that for Toronto. Let my, t- excuse me, let my Toronto people know, yo, I still got you. I'm still your guy. And Toronto loved him for it. So that was like, yo, just wanted, you guys are all playing not like us, that, that Asian restaurant has that, that Kendrick Lamar chicken fry rice dish or whatever. Drake, instead of like getting mad at Toronto, Drake did what Drake does. And he's like, I just want to remind you guys that I'm that dude. I'm the one who could put, this city on the map, on the world map. I get on a pirate, a parody song from a TikToker, shout out to Snow Day, and it literally goes all over the world, you know? So he did that. Now it's the reset, and I feel like Drake is going to get locked in. I think he's going to get into album mode, and we're going to start seeing some big hits from Drake again, you know, like God's Plan. Um, um, can't remember. I'm, I'm, uh, what's not the uh, uh, hotline bling? I'm talking about like, I'm not even talking about like rap rap. I'm talking about like global number one hit hits. He's still going to have his rap there, but I think he's going to really lock in and just remind us of like who he, who he is and the, the, the multiple genres he covered. Yeah, Kendrick Lamar is hot right now. He has that rap category. I just actually heard that Kendrick Lamar is actually going to be doing a June a Juneteenth concert in LA. It's going to be crazy. Sure, get all get that all out the way. Drake is going to come back. He's going to have an album with mega hits that songs are going to be number 1 for weeks upon weeks and he's going to remind you guys that maybe he took a, a little bit of an L to Kendrick I don't know where his mind state is at, but he's going to remind you guys that he's the Michael Jackson, not comparing him to Michael Jackson, but in terms of chart topping, he is that dude. So I think this is the reset. Again, as you all know, I'm just a fan of Drizzy. I'm a big fan. I'm always a little bit biased, Um, but I believe in Drake. And if you say that Drake is not a hit maker, then you're just a hater. So I feel like this is what it is. A little part of me is hoping because I really do not want to see Drake bow out or, or, or leave the game or lose his clout. I think he's a really good dude. I think he's good for music. And I don't want to see his reign end, man. It's been 15 years. It's unprecedented. Nobody has reigned this long. And, yo, not just going to keep it real, just as a Canadian, right? Like, I'm from Montreal. Like, lived in Toronto. Like, you know what I mean? Toronto's my second home. Like, we're four hours apart. Like, this is, it's like New York and Philly. You know what I mean? Like, that's our guy, man. So I'm rooting for Drake. I hope I'm right. A little part of me of this is hoping. If somebody out there sees this, send it to him. Maybe he could put this in his game plan if it's not his game plan. But I really do think that 80 or 90% of what I just said is what is happening right now and will come to fruition. Let me know what you guys think. I know a lot of you out there are probably disagreeing with me. People like, yo, Drake is over. He can't come back. Yo, he's doing the Lila, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I, I, you know me, I love to hear both sides. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Send me an email, trendoutloud at cfqr600.com or get at me on my social media accounts, Trent Out Loud. All right, in our second lead story, Sean Kingston spotted outside his home in Florida following release from jail, following his release from jail. So, before I get to reading the story, there's two reasons why this story is very viral. One, because Sean Kingston, you know, the whole fraud charged with his mom or whatever, blah, blah, that everyone's been talking about that. But the real reason is that he was spotted outside. And for those of you who can't see this picture, I'll describe it to you. He was spotted outside in like, I don't know if they're like boxer shorts, but they're really high up. They actually look like like a girl's booty shorts and like a white tee. And... Not body shaming. I don't want no comments about that. I don't want to try to get no backlash. But yeah, he's just look, he looks very um, heavy set, let's just say. (laughs) Some people in the comment section are like, wow, I thought this was Queen Latifah, which is not nice. Shout out to the queen. But uh, anyway, so Sean is making headlines for his fashion choices outside of his house, looking crazy out here. But he has been released. So let's find out 
what his, uh, what his conditions are or whatever. Um, Sean Kingston was released Tuesday evening after posting his bond. According to CBS Miami, a judge set his bond for $100,000 on Monday. All right, that's not so bad. Sean, Sean got that. As previously reported, both Sean and his mother were arrested and accused of conducting an organized scheme to defraud, grand theft, identity theft, and related crimes. Sean's attorney, Bob Rosenbolt, spoke out and said, Well, I don't know who is claiming they owe money to. You know we were aware of the watches. We were aware of the TV issues. If there is any other issues, I'm not sure about. It's a breach of contract. There's no fraud here. There's no organized fraud at all. So that was from Sean's attorney. The article goes on to say, Sean, who was first arrested in uh, California, was extradited to Florida and booked in Broadway County Jail la uh, sorry, last Sunday. His attorney plans to file a not guilty plea and ask for a jury trial. He expressed that he is very confident in getting his charges dismissed. So I will say one thing, not sick enough for Sean. I don't know what him and his mama are doing. And by the way, his mom has been convicted before of fraud. But what it sounds like to me, uh, let me just get what his lawyer said again. I just want that word um, contract. Yeah, breach of contract. What, I, what it sounds like to me and has always sounded like to me was that Sean was using his stardom and his likability to get things from people. Like, yo, I'm Sean Kingston. I'm famous. Yo, blah, blah, blah. I'm a rapper, singer, da, da, da. Yo, give me this car. I'll put it on Instagram for you. Okay. You know, it was supposed to maybe be for whatever, a couple of months. Then he never gave it back. Hey, give me this watch. So I think maybe that's what he was doing. By the way, a lot of influencers and celebs do this. The difference is that they give the car back. So what I think, again, just speculating here, is that Sean was probably, you know, double dipping, you know, doing things, making promises. And yes, there is a breach of contract where it's like, hey, give me this car and I'll post it and then I give it back to you. But when it when it's multiple, multiple times and when you're not giving the, the things back, then that's when the, the the legalities come into it. Now, is that fraudulent? From what I know of fraud, fraud is like, hi, my name is Bob when my name is Trent. You know what I mean? Or like signing like a fake check or whatever. Like those are the frauds that I know about. So I don't know if that really constitutes fraud, but I'm not a lawyer and I don't know. So anyways, this is all over, all over the headlines. We'll see what happens. Sean is home. His mother is home. I don't know how long this case is going to take. It seems as if like um, it seems as if like they're going to go to trial. His, his lawyer is not even trying to get the charges dropped. His lawyer is like, yo, I want a jury trial or whatever. But maybe his lawyers were probably just trying to get the charges dropped this whole time. So that's why he's resorting to uh, trial by jury. But anyways, we'll see what happens with Sean and his mom. I'll keep you guys up to date. All right, this brings us to quick news. Ring my bell. Ice Spice says she purposely put the album title on the trash can. Okay, so um, Ice Spice has announced that she's releasing her, her uh, what's, it's not sophomore, but her debut album, which is crazy because Ice Spice has been out here for so long already. I didn't even realize that she has never even put out an album, but that's the industry we're in now, man. Like you could literally just be famous and make millions of dollars off of singles. Back in the day, you had to release an album. Anyways... So there's a little bit of controversy where her, I'll describe for those who can't see this, for those who want to see it, go to my YouTube channel at Trend Out Loud. So Ice Spice is, it looks like, like she's in New York because there's a train station subway and uh, against a brick wall, she has her hands up. She has, you know, Batty Rider shorts on, half her butt's hanging out. There's graffiti and there's a trash can and the album title Y2K is on the trash can. And people are like, are you just trying to tell us that your album is trash? And this was her tweet clearing it up. And let me know if you guys think this clears it up. Um, she said, Dave LaChapelle, who was the artist, she said, who, who, who made the cover? Dave LaChapelle is Y2K. So sweet plus legendary. He didn't even charge me because he Fs with a real B word. Thank you for all the incredible art you've put out throughout the years. This cover means everything to me. Heart emoji. And yes, Y2K was placed on the trash can on purpose. Can you guess why? So she's like the title of the, the, um, the post is like 
hey, she seemingly put it there. Well, actually, you know what? Sorry, I'm mistaken. I, I was assuming that she was clearing it up. I, I gotta ch- I gotta change my title on um on the podcast. Um, so no, she this is to say that she purposely did it. She still hasn't explained why. My bad. I was hoping she would explain why, but maybe she's gonna put it in the music. So maybe she's you know trying to stir up some controversy. Oh, people think it's trash, whatever, and then it comes out where hey, this is the reason why she'll maybe put it in one of her tracks and send people to listen. All right, I get what's going on here. This is a marketing play. Well played. Well played. All right, this brings us to question of the day. What's the best piece of advice you've received from a mentor or a role model? Okay, this I thought was really good because everyone's always like, yeah, I need a mentor, I need a role model, and I actually don't go out and, and get one. So um, I thought I'd you know peel off some piece of advice for you to end off your weekend and think about during the, during the weekend. <laughs> All right, uh, some of the comments, Brianna McKenzie said, if you're the smartest person in your room, Sorry, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. Okay, just want to pause on that. People say that line all the time. I cannot accentuate, I cannot express how important that is. That should drill down not just to a room, let's say like, um, you know, like a, a room, you know, once in a blue moon. You could drill that down to your friends. If the friends you are around, you're the smartest one, you're the richest one, you're the most successful one. You're, 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 you're capping yourself. You need to be around people that know more than you, people that you could give something to for sure. Give back to people, but you need to be in a room and you need to surround yourself with people that will elevate you, that will look and be like, Oh, that's nice. Like, you know, I had 10 stores across Canada, which to me is major in my head. One of the guys who I used to mentor me, he was, uh, he had a store, he had stores in Philadelphia. He had 140 stores. So my problems, Compared to his problems, the things that he knows how to solve, it's like, pfft, dude, I was there 10 years ago. I, I remember having 10 stores. I wish I had that. That's simple. And he could mentor and help me. And he actually helped me get out a lot of my situations, or a lot of problems I was in. So mentors are super important. Most important, make sure that you are not the smartest person in the room. All right, let's get back to it. Um, all right, Electra Lady underscore show re- uh, wrote, write your vision goals in a visual place and watch you complete what's in your site. Okay, sorry to talk about like after every comment, but my therapist always tries to tell me, you know, write this down or write whatever you want down or write your goals down or write what you want to do down. And I'm like, oh, it's okay, it's in my head. He forces me to write things down and it does work. I have a little thing that I'm trying to do like every weekend and I write it down and I force myself to read it every weekend. Like before the weekend starts, this is what, you read down and it, and it's, it is a nice reminder to, you know, cause you have a lot of things that are going on in your head. So I'm a big, I'm sorry. I'm not a big fan of writing down, but I'm starting to become a big fan. So I just want to give you guys that. All right. I'm going to try not to talk. I'll continue just reading. All right. The next person wrote, your emotions are meant to guide you, not control you. Whew. That's a bar. The next person said, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. It sounds like something that's in the Bible. I'm not sure I totally understand that. Be on time, but know when to go. Woo! That's a good one. Be on time, but know when to go. Woo! Sorry. I am working on that so hard right now. You know, sometimes when you feel something and you're like, oh, I shouldn't be here right now, or I should leave, or it's time to go. Sometimes I get in my head and I'm like, is that myself telling myself I should go, or should I stay? Should I, should I keep? pushing through, you know, it's like, sometimes you got to just get up and go and, 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 and let things go. Sometimes, even though you want stuff, you got to let go sometimes. Okay. These are really good. All right. This person put a list of 11. I'll read that. And then we'll go into sports news. Don't allow compliments to feed you because they'll also be able to starve you. That's a very good one. If a dog will bring you a bone, he'll carry one. If a dog will bring a bone, he'll carry one. Not sure if I get that. If you're looking for a helping hand, look at the end of your arm. I like that. Always keep your word. Okay, thousand percent. Always have boundaries. Thousand percent. The same thing that can make you laugh will make you cry. Whew, that's that's a really good one. There's a time where I didn't understand that one. Sure, not that I didn't understand, but didn't I didn't agree with it? But thousand percent agree with that now. It doesn't matter when you finish, as long as you finish. Thousand percent. Even when I was uh, trying to run a marathon, I got injured at like 
kilometer 25, I walk the rest of the way. You always have to finish. Everyone isn't meant to go everywhere with you. Woo! Oh my God. I could literally have a whole half an hour podcast about that. You have to leave people sometimes. It's hard, but you have to. You don't win a reward for being a sucker. Okay. Um, allow no one to play with you. I got that. And the last one is there's a difference between being dumb and playing dumb. Choose better. Woo! I love that. All right. Those were really good. I don't even have anything to add. That was just amazing. All right. This brings us to sports news. Okay. FYI, I was out till very late last night. I didn't get to see the game, nor did I get to see any highlights. So I don't even want to talk about it. I don't like talking about things I don't know. I'm just going to reserve my comments till game two. Well, I'm not going to be here Monday. So it might even be game three. So not going to talk about the game. Just not going to say anything. Um, I do know who won, but I just, I need to watch first take. I need to see some highlights. I need to understand what happened and how it happened. So I'm just reserving my comments. FYI, just for those who want to know. But I do have something following up my NBA, following up the WNBA. I literally think every uh, news story this week has been the WNBA. So I thought it would be fitting to close out with the WNBA. Um, AJ Wilson becomes the first player in NBA history to have at least 35 points, 10 rebounds, and 5 steals. So the reason why I wanted to talk about this is not to toot my own horn or anything, but like I said, I think it was yesterday where I said, I love the WNBA, I love the controversy, I love the Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese, but I agree with Shannon Sharp that he was like, listen, you people, you, you women and the WNBA league, need to get your things together and it can't be only controversy it can't be oh this one got ejected this one is fighting this one pushed because this is not the wwf here right not the wwe this is not wrestling although i do love i do think it's i disagree with shannon in the sense that i do think some of it is good because it gets people talking gets people watching but what i said yesterday was that what the WNBA needs is they need to start having some news of great stats and Lo and behold, yesterday, Asia Wilson breaks a record, 35 points, 10 rebounds, and 5 steals. That's what made the NBA the NBA. Michael Jordan winning three um, three uh, finals, uh, three back-to-back finals, then taking retirement because his dad passed away, then coming back and winning uh, three titles again. You look at golf, Tiger Woods, you know, being, yes, he doesn't, he didn't beat Jack Nicholson's, Jack Nicholson's, Jack Nicholas? Jack Nicholas's record of 18 majors, but he's at 15. Serena Williams. What we love about sports is witnessing um, stardom, witn- witnessing greatness, seeing athletes ascend to the highest level and become the greatest athletes in the world. That's what will get people watching. The viral moments will get people talking. Great athleticism and amazing sports moments We'll get people locked in and watching, and that's how you'll have the ratings and the big brand deals and all of that stuff. So shout out to WNBA. Y'all are off to a great start, and you know that I will be a big supporter. All right, that's it for me. I'm really proud of myself that I got this show done on literally like two hours of sleep. And you guys, be honest, did I sound like I was tired or like unmotivated? Yo, I'm here for y'all, man. I got you, you know? My loyal, loyal listeners, man. Thank you so much. All right, so that is a wrap for me. Before I go, um, again, just to remind you, I will not be here Monday. I am taking Monday off. Sorry. If anything major happens, you know I'll come and talk to you guys. So you're, not, you're not going to any other influencer or, um, or, or podcaster to get your news. Make sure I'll stay here. But if nothing, you know, if no big major catastrophe happens, I am taking Monday off. All right. Um, all right. Before I go, a little bit of housekeeping. If you're used to watching this podcast on YouTube or podcast networks, Please try to check me out Monday to Friday from 11 to 12 on CFQR600.com, anywhere in the world on any device, or if you're in the Montreal area, 600 AM on your radio station. Please try to check us out. We play the Trend Out Loud podcast. We mix it in with 90s and 2000s hip hop and R&B. It's a dope hour. Check us out. Vice versa, if you're used to listening to this on CFQR600.com or on the radio, and you can't always catch us from 11 to 12, we understand you can always Watch the Trend Out Loud podcast on YouTube, or you could listen to it on podcast platforms. Just type in Trend Out Loud. The show will pop up. Don't forget to follow and subscribe so that you could be notified whenever we upload new episodes because we upload new episodes daily. 
That's it. Have a great weekend. If you're in the Montreal area, y'all be safe out there. I know it's going to be a lot of drinking, a lot of partying, a lot of smoking. Don't drink and drive. I'm Ubering everywhere. Well, not in the daytime because I'm ticking out my whip and, you know, we're going around with my boys and stuff. But yeah, at nighttime, be safe out there. Uber. And for the rest of you guys who are not in Montreal, come down, man. Montreal is lit. It's Montreal's best craziest weekend i know it's going to rain a little bit but if toronto anywhere else in canada come down come to montreal and i'll see y'all on the street because trust me i'm gonna be outside peace don't forget to like comment and subscribe it's your boy turn out loud peace